In a previous video we've created our checkbox component. In this video we're going to have a look at the problem we've encountered when we're actually adding and removing field from this field collection. Have a look at this uh, checkbox. When I check it you can see this privacy is set to true. It's been added to this field collection. When I uncheck it, it should disappear, but it doesn't. If we have a look at the events that are being dispatched, let's clear the console, refresh page, and if I now click on this checkbox, it dispatches the input. And then if I uncheck it, there we go, we have our remove field hyphen, and then there's the group name, which for this particular form, it is update form. And the payload, the data that we are sending with this event is the name of the field, which is privacy. So the event is being triggered. It's just, uh, there's just no handler for it. So let's go back to our editor. Just to recap, let's have a look at our checkbox, update method. If the checkbox is unchecked, and when the remove when false flag is set to true, this is when we are firing this event, this remove field, and then concatenated with a group name, we passing as a payload, we are passing the name of the field. So we need to capture this event and obviously process it uh, accordingly. So I'm going to copy the entire block here, go to our wrapper.view file, and if we scroll down to our created, I'm going to paste it here, and rather than fire, I'm going to change it to listen, because we are listening to this event with the group name and rather than using the name of the field this time I'm going to delegate it to an internal method this remove field and we obviously don't have this method yet if we scroll down right after clear notifications this is where we're gonna put it so remove field and what this method will take is the name of the field because that's what we are sending uh, when we are actually dispatching this event. So remove field here, we are going to use the helper. So before we do anything else, I'm just going to split screen and I just go up to the top and import this helper. It's gonna come from import helper from, and we go one, two levels up, core, then we have helper class there. Okay, so we've imported this, we can close it. And let's go back to our method, remove field. We don't have this method on the helper yet, but it's going to be called helper, and it's going to be called remove object properties. It's plural, so we're going to pass several properties or just a single one wrapped in array. In our case, it's going to be a single one, but we're going to surround it with the set of uh, square brackets indicating that it's an array. First arguments that we're going to pass to this particular method will be the instance of this wrapper. So this, then we are going to pass the field that we actually want to remove. And because it's a single field that we're dealing with here, we are going to wrap it in array, as I've already explained, and we pass the name of the field. And then the last thing, from what collection we want to remove this field. And it's going to be this internal fields collection. Now let's copy the name of this method, open our helper, so core helper.js, and that's going to be a static method as well, so a static remove object properties. First of all, we take in the wrapper, which is the instance of our wrapper component, then we take indexes that we want to remove. We could have just a single one, but uh, this method might be used by any other components uh, which may have a collection of indexes, so rather than just putting the single one, let's just do it as a collection. Then we are passing the object which from which we want to remove the values, the, the given properties, and then the fourth property which we didn't pass through uh, will be parent key. This one will be generated by this internally by this particular method. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is obtain the properties of our object. So object, and we get getting keys of it. So keys, and we pass through an object as an argument. And then for each of these properties, each one will represent the key. And then we are going to have our callback method. First of all, what we're going to do is specify a new parent key. Let new parent key equals, and we're going to check. If parent key is present, then use it, so parent key, and concatenate it with the full stop. Otherwise, we are going to have an empty string. And then we are going to concatenate it with the key we are currently iterating over. Now, what happens here? Say we have an object of this type and we have, say, name, which is an object and has first, for instance, 
and then it has a string. So what happens first, on the first iteration, we because obviously we are starting iterating, this parent key will not have any values. So this will simply return an empty string. And what we're going to get will be the name as this key. So in the first iteration, we're only going to obtain the name for this new parent key. If we were doing the second iteration on this given object, because obviously this is an object, then it's going to go to the next level, we will already pass the key this new parent key which will represent the name and here we are going to concatenate it so it's going to be name full stop and the name of the key first so this will result in name first string so this is how we're going to concatenate it basically okay uh let's remove this temporary code so we have our new parent key now we're going to check if exclamation mark helper internal method is object we have to use the name of the of the class because we referring to a static method and we check in if object on this object and the given key if this is not an object then we're going to do something else we are going to iterate again so helper remove object properties we are passing the wrapper through as an argument our indexes and then object with the key we are currently looping through so key and then new parent key now what happens here if the given value is not an object we know that we've reached the end of object iteration and if this given key is found within this indexes collection then that's the key we want to remove otherwise we are going to loop again because that means this is an object we still haven't actually obtained the key with the associated value other than object because if it's an object we still need to iterate of it okay so let's now check if an exclamation mark indexes includes if it doesn't include new parent key then that means that this particular key does not need to be touched so return and we're done with this next we are going to check if the given property is not inherited from a prototype or any mixing because if it is then that's not the property we want to remove so if exclamation mark object has own property and we pass the key if it doesn't have its own property then we also terminate the statement otherwise if both of the above returned false then we want to use the instance of our component so wrapper and the method that we have available on it which is delete we use the object and the key that we want to remove from this object. That's how we're going to remove the property from our fields collection. Okay, let's now save and close it. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to recompile all our files. So let's go back to our terminal and run npm run dev. And now we can go back to our browser, refresh it, and let's have a look at our fields collection now. If we now check the checkbox it appears but if we uncheck it it disappears so as you can see it works fine now and same as before if you would like to learn more about certain methods that we've used during this episode have a look at the view documentation you have view delete method which we've used uh, today as well as array prototype for each which allows us to iterate over the arrays